Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing a gaming benchmark comparison between two uh, pretty popular gaming CPUs that are out right now that people have been using for probably the last, I guess for Ivy Bridge you're coming up on two years now, just about. Uh, but I'm going to be doing, putting the AMD FX8350 versus the Intel Core i5-3570K. These processors are still pretty much mainstream for gaming. Uh, they're really popular on both sides. Intel Core i5 is pretty much the most popular gaming CPU from Intel. And then the FX8350 is probably the best gaming CPU you can get if you're with AMD. Uh, just to show some settings here before we get into the benchmark. The AMD, well I guess I can't show it now since they're not running anything. But what you'll see, AMD's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. Uh, and Intel's overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, pretty much that was my good 24-7 overclock that I could get on both of my chips. So I'm just going to leave them at that. Uh, Intel, I'm just going to say right now, has better IPC, so it doesn't need as high of a clock as AMD. I would recommend people who want a smoother gaming experience with AMD. would I definitely recommend overclocking. These are unlocked out of the box for that reason. Uh, just make sure you're running some pretty decent cooling. Uh, what I'm currently using, I guess I'll show it here. I'm using the the liquid cooling kit that came with the. It's like an Asetek cooler, similar to the Antec coolers. Uh, I got that on the AMD, and then the Intel's just on air uh, because it doesn't generate too much heat. Uh, you don't need that much voltage. Uh, so pretty much I have AMD at 4.8, that's going to be equivalent almost to like a, an FX 9590, which is the most expensive gaming CPU you can get from AMD. Uh, for graphics cards, to keep them in price range competitive, uh, AMD is equipped with a 7870, so that is effectively, uh, that's like an R9 270X. See that there? This is the XFX. And I have it clocked. I have it overclocked slightly to 1100 megahertz on the core. I left the memory the same. For the Intel, I went with a 7850, the two gigabyte one. Uh, that's a little bit, but I, then again, I have it overclocked to the same 1100 megahertz. Uh, this is the Sapphire Boost overclock factory overclocked edition. Uh, the reason why I have a slightly lower end GPU in the Intel is because that's how you get them to equal out in terms of price. The 8350 is cheaper than the Core i5, but the 7850 is cheaper than the 7870. So it's evened out that way. So I guess we can, whoops, we can go ahead and uh, start the benchmarks. Let me see if I can get them to start at the same time. Here we go. The test is being done on 1200p monitors, so I'm running it in Windows mode at uh, 1080p. Just bring up CPU ID here real quick just to show that the speed is at the overclock settings. So as we can see, the 8350 is running at 1.5 volts, which is pretty much stock voltage if it was a 9590, and it's running at 4.8 gigahertz. The Intel is running at 4.3 gigahertz. And there we go. Uh, one other thing I guess I'll point out, the memory People probably ask about the memory. AMD is running 1866 RAM and Intel's running 1600 RAM. RAM won't make that big of a difference, but I did give AMD the benefit of the doubt because this processor officially supports uh, 1866 speed. And the fact that we're overclocking it, uh, the memory controller shows that it's good enough to maintain that stock or that supported speed. And Intel supports. For Ivy Bridge, Intel supports 1600 megahertz as their maximum speed. That's guaranteed if you're overclocking. 
So if you start running this at like 2133 or something, if you're overclocking the CPU, you're not guaranteed to maintain that overclocked RAM. So that's why I kept Intel at 1600 and AMD at 1866. Because that's what's officially supported by these. So I guess from here we can just let them run to completion. Uh, people are probably going to comment, I can already see this coming, why aren't you using a higher end GPU for this test? This is a CPU bound game. You can already max this out on a 7850 as you'll see here. Uh, and another thing is I went for a real world test. Most gamers out there, you look at the Steam survey every month, you're not going to be seeing 70, 780 Ti's in everybody's system. You're not going to be seeing GTX 770's or R9 280X or uh, 79, 70 gigahertz editions and all this quad SLI or crossfire that people are always like, why well, aren't you doing a higher end GPU test? Well, that's not what the majority of people are using. Uh, League of Legends gamers are not using 780 Ti's. Uh, if you want to see those kind of benchmark comparisons, you go look at the sites that are showing like Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, all those shooter games. I'm not a big shooter game. I'm not, uh, I'm not a big shooter gamer, so I don't really care about FPS or first-person shooter games. I'm not going to really show too much of that. I may do Planet Side 2 just because it's like a MMO style. Uh, but what I my goal here is to show CPU bound games so particularly that's going to feature a lot of MMOs so we'll do some older ones I may do Terra Rising uh, Guild Wars 2 I'm not going to do WoW that game's too old it doesn't matter these both of these CPUs can run that at over 100 FPS uh, but I guess if you guys want to see other benchmarks for CPU dependent games uh, trying to or anything like that modern games or older games you can let me know uh, if I have the game, I'll probably go ahead and make a video on it. Uh, basically, what I'm looking to see here is if both computers, both systems can score over 7,000. If they score over 7,000, that means that they they manage to average over 60 FPS. So it looks like AMD has already achieved that goal. You can see the score over there. The camera will focus. Well... It's at 7500 at 1080p with a 7870 on maximum settings. Intel's almost there. I'm pretty sure it's going to get over 7000 too. It just started the test a little bit later for some reason. There we go. It's going to hit over 7000. But as you can see, both, both are able to achieve uh, excellent scores. So AMD completed the test. With a score with a 7870, it scored 7,888. Uh, the graphics card was slightly overclocked. It, it comes factory overclocked at uh, 1050 megahertz. I overclocked it by 15 megahertz. And then the Sapphire card comes out of the box. I'll we'll have to wait for the test to finish here. But it comes at like 9 something. It's almost almost a gigahertz. Uh, okay, so 7,628 on the on the Intel. So that right there looks like they perform about the same. Uh, you could attribute the slightly higher score on AMD to the 7870, uh, but it looks like both of them scored over 60 FPS. If we check the details, we will see that right there. Intel at 1080p preset maximum. Average 64 FPS. We bring the AMD score up over here. So 60, so about 60, you round that up, 65 FPS average. That's excellent for this game for MMO. Uh, and AMD got like 66 FPS. So it's like one and a half FPS higher. Uh, probably attributed to who knows the 7870. So it looks like both of them. I would call this test. Well, I guess I'll give. AMD the victory for this because it scored it did score higher uh, so what that means is for the money you can get a less expensive processor with a slightly more expensive graphics card and pair that together and that's the result you get whereas with the other system this is what you get if you pair a slightly pop more powerful CPU with a slightly weaker GPU so you get pretty much the same result 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you want to see more of these kind of videos, please uh, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. As always, guys, take care.